Welcome to Christian Living 101 Bible Studies. Our mission is to prepare every believer for the trials of daily life. Are you ready for eternity? Can you face Jesus, the King of Kings, upon his return? Do you know the pathway to everlasting life? Listen to God's Word presented without church or organizational bias as you study with Pastor Applegate. Now we join Christian Living 101 in progress. Well, praise the Lord. It's a good day to serve Him, and we're going to be talking about the blessings that we have when we serve our Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. I want you to be aware today that we're uh, involving the uh, Word of God in a more encouraging way. Uh, the last uh, two or three weeks, we've been talking about the urgency of preparing for hard times and uh, difficult situations. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the blessings that we have as we serve the Lord and God's promises to those who are faithful to Him uh, to preserve, to keep, and to provide uh, for their benefit. And so, uh, we're going to be going to the uh, Psalms, number 37, and we're going to talk about uh, David's uh, rejoicing and declaring unto the Lord his pleasure and privilege of serving him and knowing that he has a faithful God that will never, never forsake him. Well, now if you've been listening to the last two or three messages, we've talked about taking up your cross or Take up your cross and follow me, Jesus said. Uh, today we're going to get into something that is a little bit more uh, uh, uplifting, I trust, as we go to the book of Psalms, chapter number 37, and uh, we're going to begin reading with verse number 18. You, you know I've been talking about getting close to the Lord, being sure that you've got good communication with Him. David is a man uh, that uh, had uh, made mistakes. Uh, he was not perfect. Uh, he had all kinds of uh, challenges within his life. And as he began to serve as king over Israel, uh, we find that uh, uh, he learned a great deal about trusting in the Heavenly Father. And he talks about it. I want to remind you that it's important for us to get close to the Lord because when we do, we're in constant presence of uh, His Spirit, of His Word, and uh, uh, it's a position wherein we know that he's right there. And no matter what we're going through at that particular moment, we're very aware that he is with us and in charge. And the very fact that we're close to the Lord and we draw a near unto him and, and we just make him the very foundation uh, of our life and, and the center of our focus in life and everything else uh, just sort of fits in as a uh, uh, need be, and uh, the Lord blesses, and the Lord strengthens, and the Lord guides, and He directs, and uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I want to mention to you that, uh, uh, have you ever wondered about uh, uh, why we're here on earth, what we are, are here for, what we are to do, uh, what uh, is productive out of our life? I don't know about you, but I've watched as uh, great men of God have faded away into eternity, and uh, it isn't long after they're gone until uh, they're mostly forgotten, and there's not very much left of, of their ministry because someone else picks it up, and they carry it on, or uh, it goes in a different direction, and that person that administered for those many years uh, found themselves in a situation where uh, God had fulfilled his requirement and his desire uh, to use them in this world, and so he took them on to be with him. And I think we all understand that. It's a process of life and uh, uh, of uh, transferring from uh, this world into the eternal kingdom of the living God for those of us who walk in faith and know the real experience of being redeemed through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, basically, our time here on this earth is an opportunity for us to prepare for eternal kingdom living in the beautiful and perfect and righteous kingdom of God. 
And we're going to talk about that a little bit too before we get done in the study today, I trust. Now go with me to Psalms 37 and we're going to begin reading with verse 18. Uh, the Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Now that's quite a statement, isn't it? Isn't that an encouraging word? Uh, you're going through a hard time, difficult times, and, and uh, as we mentioned in the previous studies, there's times when we're going to be uh, really challenged in our faith, but by the same token, uh, we have the promise of God and the experience of David as he lived for the Lord in declaring that the Lord knoweth the, the days of the upright. That the Lord knows what we're doing. The Lord knows what we're going through. The Lord understands the situation that we happen to be in. And he's never far away if we draw close unto him. And so I guess the best thought I could have today for a title for our study was small deposit, great reward. I don't know if you happen to be one of those that are privileged to have maybe just a small savings account uh, in the, the natural uh, life in which we live, maybe a few dollars in there, maybe even a few hundred or a few thousand dollars in savings. And uh, you get your statement and you look at it and you find out that uh, uh, you lost money uh, even though it was supposed to make you money because the interest they're paying is less than what the uh, cost of living increase is and the inflation rate is. And you look at that and you say, what in the world have I gained? I've lost money. Well, I think we're all pretty much aware of that situation with the uh, financial structure of this old world today. But I want you to know that in the kingdom of God, there is a financial structure and a spiritual structure uh, that always produces a, a reward that is sure and positive. I don't know how familiar you may be with the scriptures, but uh, the scriptures talks about a 30% increase. Uh, it talks about a 60% increase, and it talks about a 100% increase. And so when you're dealing with that kind of uh, blessing and uh, addition to what you already have, gets to be pretty exciting, doesn't it? And so as we look at this scripture, we want to be reminded that, um, well, maybe we got up this morning and things weren't going just right. And we found ourselves in that moment of um, a quiet uh, uh, sort of uh, meditation, uh, wondering about what the day holds, perhaps dreading what we already know the day holds. And uh, we find ourselves in a situation where uh, we realize that uh, uh, really nobody else is going to deal with it. Nobody else cares. Uh, we're going to have to take care of whatever it is that uh, uh, we're pondering over uh, happens to be. And uh, it's going to be strictly upon our shoulders. Well, it's a wonderful thing when you're a child of God because as you serve the Lord on a daily basis and you walk with him in his presence continually, which we can do even though we perform the work and secular labors of this world, we find ourselves in a situation where uh, no matter whether we feel uh, troubled or bewildered or uh, down in the dumps for some reason, or whether we're high in joy and expectation and anticipation of what the day holds, it doesn't really make a lot of difference because we're aware that God is right there with us and we're right there with him. And so David learned the secret of that as he served the Lord faithfully all those years. In spite of making mistakes, we'll deal with that in this lesson too a little bit, but we want you to understand that God loves you, God cares for you, and you may feel like there's nobody in this world that even knows you're alive, but I want you to know that the Lord never forsakes his own, and he's very much aware of what your day holds and what you're going to need and how he's going to bless you, and if we walk in that confidence, 
takes the big load off of our shoulders. We just shift it off of our shoulders onto the Lord. And we say, Lord, I know I can trust you to lead me through whatever it is. If it's to be uh, down in the valley, uh, heavily laden with uh, uh, the cares and the burden of ministry or of life, uh, that's okay. Or if it's a time of great victory and joy, I know that you'll be right there with me to uh, help me to glorify your name and to uh, express my excitement and, and uh, the beauty of receiving of your blessing as we serve you on a daily basis. So Psalms, the 18th verse, makes it very plain. God knows the days of the upright. And you're walking before the Lord in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ if you have accepted him as your Lord and your Redeemer. And, uh, of course, that involves uh, uh, following through with what uh, uh, the Apostle Peter gave unto the people in uh, the second chapter of Acts, Acts uh, chapter 2, verse 38, tells us that we are to repent of our sin and be baptized for the remission of sin. And uh, you need to do that, of course, and I trust that you already have. So go to verse 19. It says, They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. What a glorious promise. What a wonderful knowledge that David had attained because uh, he had the high times of great victory and joy. He had the low times of great battle and, uh, and defeat in some instances because of uh, bad decisions that he made in his life uh, from time to time. And, and there were those times when the enemies of David were after him and trying to destroy him. They would have loved to get a hold of him and, and just put him to death and get rid of him because he was such a threat uh, to their life and to what they wanted in life as they did not serve the Lord. When we look at this, we find then that uh, this verse 19 is a very precious verse. They shall not be ashamed. Ha have you ever uh, been given a task in this natural world and you did your very, very best with it, but you knew you didn't get it done very well and uh, uh, you had to present uh, what you had accomplished uh, uh, to someone, perhaps uh, uh, someone that was depending upon you to help them. Maybe it's somebody that you are responsible to uh, perform uh, a certain duty uh, because of your position and, and the wages that they had agreed to pay you. A and you worked and you labored and you tried and you did everything you could. Uh, but uh, uh, you knew that when you presented what you had accomplished that it wasn't really what they were looking for. And you sort of did it with apology, did it with a bit of shame and and uh, discouragement and sort of a, a being distraught within your spirit because you knew it should be better, but it wasn't. And you didn't uh, uh, find a way to make it better. And so in the natural, you feel sort of ashamed that you couldn't have done a better job. I don't know if you've ever been in that kind of a situation or not, but I have. And I imagine you have too. Well, God is not that way. He looks upon us. He knows what our abilities are. He knows when we do the best that we can. And he knows when we're sort of uh, careless or indifferent or uh, slough off and uh, get lazy and, and just don't do what uh, he directed to have us do in that particular time span. Well, I want you to know that we can come before the Lord and not be ashamed when we walk close to him on a daily basis. Because, you see, we don't depend upon our ability or our talent. We don't depend upon our intellect or our uh, comprehension of uh, all the details and things around about us. We have our Lord to help us and the Holy Spirit to guide and direct us. Uh, the, the Word of God to implant within us the basics of of godly living and righteousness before the Lord and our Heavenly Father. And we're never alone. 
We never work by ourselves. We never lean upon our own abilities to do whatever it is, whether it be a secular responsibility or a time of spiritual ministry. God is with us. He knows us. He knows what we're facing in every day, the circumstance and the situation of every hour. And as we go through life, we find that indeed we do not have to be ashamed when we are living with him, in him, through him, and by him in everything that we do in a secular, spiritual, or tangible measure here upon this earth. So as we continue with the thought that we have here in verse 19 in Psalms 37, uh, it says, I shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. God has a miraculous way of taking care of his people. I know that uh, at least once or twice a week, I have some kind of... Uh, correspondence coming across my desk of somebody wanting to prepare me for the for the future. Uh, are you prepared for uh, the time of famine? Are you prepared if you don't have any food to eat? Are you, you know, uh, do, you, do you need to have an increase in uh, what little bit of uh, money that you might have? On and on. Always somebody wanting you to, to prepare for the future. Well, now I want to tell you something. I firmly believe in preparing for the future on this tangible earth in any measure that we can. But at the same time, I want you to know that if I find myself where everything that I have has been taken away, I still have a God that will love me, will care for me, will direct my path, and will see to it that I don't starve to death. I understand that God is able to create, as it were, uh, food for me if that should ever be necessary. And uh, I've had several experiences down through life that I could share with you, uh, but I just will pass it off today and say, uh, I want you to know that if you do what you can do and what you know you should do in uh, preparation for uh, future days in this old world, you need to know that God is with you, and when the evil time comes, when uh, everything is lost, uh, that time comes when the old enemy comes in like a flood and uh, steals from you that which you have, you need to know that God knows it. He knows all about it, and that's the time to go back and to remember what God did for the children of Israel when he brought them out of Egypt. There wasn't a meal that they missed. God provided in one way or another for their needs for 40 years in the hot desert without uh, anyone growing any crops or providing any food other than what they might have gained from uh, perhaps their livestock. Uh, and even then, apparently, there were times when that was not sufficient and God provided, and he'll always provide. And you need to know that when uh, uh, our faith really works is when uh, it's needed. You know, if you've got everything you need, we've been talking about faith some quite a bit lately. Uh, if you've got all that you need, you don't really need to have a lot of faith or to exercise a lot of faith. I'm not sure there's any way to really measure faith, but... Uh, I will tell you this, uh, you can rest assured that God knows what you're going through each day and he's going to be there to come to your rescue and to cause you to be satisfied in the evil day when everything turns bleak and dark around you and it seems like that uh, everything in this world has come to uh, depart from you. You just need to know that God never leaves nor forsakes his own. Verse 20. The wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume. What that is saying in our modern day language, uh, the fat of lambs was burned. They used it sometimes in 
uh, burning the sacrifice. Uh, uh, sometimes they used it for other purposes. But you need to understand that uh, it, it just it burns up, and when it's burned up, it's gone, and it's not worth anything. You need to know that uh, even as uh, uh, we have to deal with this life, we need to be reminded very, very quickly that uh, the wicked will perish. Oh, they seem to get ahead very, very well. In fact, uh, uh, my wife came home the other day from a business where she had been uh, getting some service done, and uh, there was a lady who came in, and she had been very wealthy, uh, and her husband had uh, passed on, and somehow or another, a family member had come to the point that uh, they had literally stolen all of the assets of, of uh, their their father and left their mother with absolutely nothing to live on. And it was a time of challenge. Evil had come. This poor lady had trusted uh, in the preparation that her husband had made for her and when he had passed on, she come to find out that the daughter had stolen it all. And yet she had papers signed that she could not undo. There was nothing she could do about it. The dark times can come to us, beloved. They can. And the evil time can come unexpectedly upon us. But we need to know this. We need to know the wicked will perish. That one who abuses you, steals from you, robs you, uh, abuses you, whatever they do that is unjust against you, you need to know that in due time they're going to pay an awful price. And in most cases, they're going to pay an eternal price for what they've done evil unto you. And the enemies of the Lord will be burned as the fat of a lamb. And uh, that... Uh, is something that we need to be reminded of. They think that they're uh, really getting the best of everything, but they'll discover when they meet the judge of all judges, the holy God uh, of Israel, they're going to discover that they have made some big mistakes, but it's too late to change anything. They will be burned as the oil of a lamb is burned with fire. Into smoke shall they consume away. The scripture says in Psalms 37 20. Verse 21. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. And I want to tell you a little secret. I know there are those of you that serve the Lord and you love the Lord, but you, you have the uh, uh, you have the mentality, and I'm not uh, judging you, I'm just sharing the truth with you. You have the mentality that I can't afford uh, to pay my tithe. I can't afford uh, to help someone else. I can't afford to give anything. I can barely make it myself. But here's the secret. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. And you know, I discovered years ago when I had absolutely nothing and I've come to the point in my older years where I had absolutely nothing, not even a roof over my head. My wife and I had no place to go, no place to live. And uh, uh, because of the generosity of a loving daughter, we uh, camped out in the garage of her house for a number of months. But you know what? God restored, God gave back, God added to. And I want to tell you, uh, there are those who will borrow. Can I just borrow this? Will you just, I'll pay you back now. I mean, but can I just borrow it? But they never pay you back. They don't intend to pay you back when they borrow it. But when you give it unto them and loan it unto them with the promise of being paid back and you don't receive it, they don't honor that promise. Let it go. Let it go. Remember that God knows their days too. And that God will bring justice 
in the end and in the meantime, he will provide for you miraculously. You can never outgive God. You can't do it. And so, beloved, if you're caught in that place where you say, I know that I'm supposed to give unto the Lord. I know I'm supposed to be generous and, and help others. I, I know all of this, uh, but I just can't afford to. I want to tell you something. can't afford not to because God promises that whatever you invest in his kingdom, small deposit, it may be a time of uh, uh, giving of funds. It may be a time of sacrificing time. It may be a time of waiting before the Lord in intense prayer and intercession before the throne of God uh, for someone else. Uh, it may be a, a multitude of different things uh, that you extend and expend unto uh, helping others and to being a person that glorifies the Lord in your generosity and love to help someone else. And so you must remember that just as God remembers our days, he remembers and knows the days of the ungodly as well. You see, verse 22 says, For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. You see, if we're serving the Lord and walking close to him, and if we have learned the secret of letting God be the very center focal point of our life day by day, you'll find that God will bless, he will provide, he will comfort, he will keep. Well, you said last week that we'll have infirmity and we'll have trials and we'll have tests, and that's all true. But God does not desert us in those times. He gives us the sustenance and the ability to walk in them. And as we are faithful in that walk, we find that he adds blessing upon blessing, provision upon provision, and it brings us to a point wherein we can say, Hallelujah! God made a way where there was no way. God provided when there was nothing to provide. God did what he said he would do, and he kept me in that time of trouble. And so as we be blessed of him, we'll inherit the earth. And they that don't, they that are evil, they that abuse and misuse us, the children of the Lord, they're going to inherit the cursing of God. Verse 23 says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. That brings me to a thought that uh, I think most of us sort of pass over, uh, really don't ever comprehend really what was going on. Uh, when I go back to the writings in the book of Job, and I find that God said unto Satan, Hey, Satan, you think you're so hot? Now I'm adding some words here in my vocabulary. Uh, but this is really what was going on. Okay, Satan, you think you're so hot. You think you can get anybody to serve you. You think that you just have power over everything that I've created down there on earth. Uh, ha have you noticed something? Uh, I have a righteous man that serves me every day. His name is Job. And you'll remember that Satan answered to him and said, Yes, of course, I can't get to him because you bless him so much. He's got everything in the world that he needs. There's nothing that he needs that he can't obtain. I can't even get close to him because you've been too good to him. And God says, Oh, you don't get it. Job serves me not because of what I give him. He serves me because he loves me, because I'm his God, his Heavenly Father, I'm the one that he worships and he depends upon uh, to uh, order his steps. And so it is. And you and I, when we find ourselves in those situations, it's time for us to throw up our hands, and not in uh, surrender, but our hands in praise, our hands in thanksgiving, our hands in rejoicing and saying, Lord, I don't know why I'm going through these things, but I do remember that Job went through uh, the terrible things he faced and lost everything, 
Not because he had failed, but because he was righteous. You declared to Satan that he was a righteous man. And Father, I'm righteous through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son and my Lord and my Redeemer. And I know, Father, that you're with me and you will order my steps as needed. So the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. You know, there's a lot of times that we let the feelings of carnal flesh, which is so imperfect and is so corruptible and is so inept and incapable in so many areas. And we find that we begin to depend upon that and it can become discouraging very quickly because we soon learn that either I don't have the understanding or the intellect or uh, the capacity or the ability uh, to find a solution or to provide or to do whatever the moment needs, and there I am. But you see, when I realize that the Lord is always with me, that he knows my way, the way that I'm walking and what I'm do dealing with each day, when I understand and know that, I can say, Lord, I don't understand. I don't know what this is all about. I don't know how to do what I know in my carnal thinking needs to be done. But Lord, I have you. Heavenly Father, you'll guide me. You'll direct me. You will order my steps. And as a result, Father, I'm going to be careful to draw as close to you as I can. And I'm going to listen carefully to your word and to your spirit and to the voice of God as you direct my paths and give me insight into the obligations or the needs of the hour. The 24th verse is a very important scripture for us. I've made some mistakes in my life. I've failed God. There has been times when I just failed him. I just... I, I didn't do what I knew I should do. I, I failed and I was disobedient to him. And that leaves you in a terrible state of depression when you realize after the fact that I really blew it. I didn't do as I knew I should do. You say, you mean you've had those kind of days, Pastor? Oh, yes. You have to remember that all of us, while we're still here in this old carnal flesh, have a, a great weakness, and that is letting the flesh take over instead of letting us listen and be dependent and walk in faith before our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Redeemer, Jesus the Christ. And so, yes, I've been there. And I imagine that most of you have been there. If you haven't been, the chances are you will be. Because the flesh is weak, it's incapable, and it is very carnal and very destructible. But we find that verse 24 in Psalms 37 says something that I want you to catch. Though he fall, talking about the righteous man, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord of holdeth him with his hand. When you have failed God to the point that it feels like that you've just completely deserted him, and you know in your heart that he should have deserted you, you need to come to that place where you remember what David knew, that even when we fall, when we make a mistake, when we mess up, modern day language, God reaches out with his hand and says, I see you, you're going to fall into that pit if something doesn't happen in your life and I see where you're at and he sticks out his hand and you feel him literally take hold of yours and lift you back up and set your path back upon the way of obedience 
back upon the way of righteousness, back upon the way of fellowship in him, because, you see, he knows the way of your life in every day that you walk this earth. Now, verse 25 declares, I've been young and now I'm old, David said. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Now, I don't mean to sound like I'm condemning or finding fault, but we live in a time where there seems to be abundance all around us, and yet we see the homeless people. We see the people standing at the curb asking for a handout. Uh, some of those people really need it, and there are many of them that are just taking uh, your money and your uh, doing what you can, what you think is helping them, and you're really facilitating them, and they'll take your money and they'll go buy their alcohol or their drugs, and they won't buy a bit of food, and they'll be back there again the next day asking someone else, and really sometimes we Christians, I think, are facilitating people that are doing the evil things and do not intend to serve God at all, and because of that, we may neglect those who really need it. But you see, when you walk close to the Lord, and when you know that He is guiding your steps, and when you understand that He will give direction through His Spirit in conversation with your spirit, you can know then that as you come across situations like that, you'll feel the tug of the Lord on your heart saying, It's okay. Go ahead and help this person. And you do. And it makes you rejoice because you was able to help. And you feel like that it was productive because you know that the Lord made it plain that the need was there. And so God is so gracious. When we do make a mistake, he lifts us up and sets us back on the narrow way. And when we come to the place where we're bewildered and we don't know what to do, when we should act and when we should not act, the Holy Spirit guides and directs us, and the Word of God is always there to give us instruction. So, beloved, it's a privilege to serve God, and everything we do for Him is just a very small deposit that we're putting to our account for the ages of eternity to come. Keep that in mind. David said, I've been young and now I'm old. But I've never seen those who put their trust in God beg for bread. God provides. Verse 26 says, He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Now that word lendeth, that you and I talk about lending money and expect to get it back, and, and sometimes we invest money whatever little bit we might have, and we expect it to uh, bring us a profit. Uh, and sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. All of those things happen in this old and godly world in which we live, because nothing is perfect here except the power and the love of God and His ability to take care of His own. And so uh, God is merciful, and God did uh, and will help in the time of need. And we'll never be able to outdo what God does for us. And there's somehow or another, God always sends it back, whatever kind of action it might have been, in a measure that is far greater than what we expended when we did whatever we did to minister to help someone else. And so verse 27 declares, Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. The Lord loves it when we look at the opportunity to share and the opportunity to help someone. The Lord loves it when we make an effort to minister to someone's need. And he loves that and he loves that in us. And uh, he loves the 
judgment. See, here's the, the word judgment. We always think of judgment as being uh, the the right hand of God or uh, uh, getting what we deserve because we failed someone. Uh, this word judgment here uh, is a word that covers so many different facets of life. This word judgment means making a good decision and extending ourselves in whatever form necessary uh, to minister to the need at hand. And so the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. I said small deposit equals great reward. You know, if we lived to be 300 years old here on this earth and spent every day doing nothing but good to the glory of God, we could not ever do enough good and put enough to our account in the kingdom of God to earn or to deserve what we're going to receive through Jesus Christ, our coming King, our Lord and our Redeemer. And uh, we need to understand that whatever we do here is uh, laying up for ourselves, as the scripture says, treasures in heaven. We're going to talk about heaven a little bit later on, maybe in another study, but perhaps I'll touch on it in this one just a little bit. Verse 29, the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. What land? The land that God is giving unto us to rule in and to live in forever throughout the days of eternity. Oh, well, I thought we were all going to heaven. Well, I'm going to give you this little teaser. Did it ever occur to you that heaven is just a deposit bank for our soul, our spirit, uh, before the throne of God until God gives unto us a, an earth and a heaven that, and the heavens that is uh, beyond our comprehension and it'll be perfect in every degree and detail and we'll live in a glorious state throughout all eternity. We can't even begin to imagine it, at least I can't, and I want you to know that as you uh, begin to uh, become free with your life in service unto the Lord, in ministering unto his people, in giving of yourself in kindness and good deeds to those that are in need, all of those things that happen in our life that gives us the opportunity to express the spirit of the Lord, Jesus Christ, as we live here in the face of so much unfairness, inequities, ungodliness, and downright evil situations. We are the light on the hill that all the world can see if we live for the Lord on that narrow way that leads to life eternal. And uh, it is productive both while we're here on this earth in this condition and state of mind and spirit, physical body, but it's also laying up a recurring blessing for us throughout all the ages of eternity. Now let's go to verse 30. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. I don't know where that came from. I had someone come to me, and they uh, said that uh, they were in a particular situation talking with someone, and all at once there was a, a statement that came out of their mouth. Of, and they said, I never thought that statement. I didn't, wasn't even thinking along that line. And all at once I just said this. And when I said this, the person that I was talking to lit up and they all filled with excitement. And they said, oh, thank you. Thank you. That's just what I needed to hear. Well, what was that? That was God speaking through you, and you gave judgment unto him, and you used your judgment to let him speak, and you responded as he moved through you to minister to another. Folks, as you serve the Lord, that happens all the time in one way or another. 
that you don't really know or understand. God gets the glory. Praise his wonderful name. So, we now come to the point where it says, The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. Verse 33 now, The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. He won't leave you in the wicked's hand. He won't allow the wicked to take control of you. He will preserve and keep you when the wicked threaten everything that you are and stand for. And as I said, maybe even will take your life. But all he can take is this old flesh of ours. Because you see, what we are and who we are just has this as a body to live in. And we've got a better body waiting for us uh, when we go into eternity in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Redeemer. And I want you to uh, just remember, Mark the perfect man, verse 37, Behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors, verse 38, But the transgressors shall be destroyed together, the end of the wicked shall be cut off. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Verse 39. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. You see, as you walk close to the Lord in the hard times, as I've talked about now for the last three or four weeks, when you walk there, you know that as you walk, the Lord knows every step you take in the day, everything that's going to happen in the day. He knows before it happens what's coming. And it makes a promise to you. In verse 40, The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Praise the Lord. With that, we need to close the study. We'll serve communion in just a couple of minutes. And uh, I pray that you'll stay with us and receive communion with us. All you need is a little tiny bit of grape juice, a little small bit of unleavened bread uh, that uh, represents the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, you can... Take your own communion right there in your home, if you wish, as we serve it here for all to participate with us in. So God bless you, and we'll be back in just a moment or two.
thank you, Lord. We're going to go to Luke chapter 22 again today. And I'm going to read to you beginning with uh, the 22nd chapter and verse 13. It says, And they went and they found as he had said unto them, and they made ready for the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him, and he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Verse 16, For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he said, Take it, divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I'll not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread, and gave thanks, and break it, gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. And so as we consider those words, and we're reminded of the price that Jesus paid, that we might have everlasting life, be a righteous citizen in the kingdom of God for all the ages to come. We're reminded of the price that he paid. And so we're going to pray and ask God to Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We're not perfect. I, to my knowledge, don't have any sin in my life. But just in case, I'm going to ask God to cleanse me. And the same should be true in your life. And if you know that you're not really in a place that you are right before God, that you know that he's displeased with some things in your life, then don't take of communion. Because uh, Paul tells the Corinth church in chapter number 11 of First Corinthians, if there's anything there, don't take it. You'll be creating judgment, a curse upon your life. And so with those thoughts, let's pray and we'll eat together. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, because you paid the price that our Heavenly Father sent you to do. And Lord, we're so thankful that you were faithful. And because you were faithful that we have been regenerated, we have been renewed, and we have been given a new spirit. And surely the things of old have passed away, and all things have become new. And so, Lord, if there be any uncleanness within our life today, forgive us, cleanse it, and Lord, we will turn from it in the name of Jesus. We will overcome and we will walk in the surety of righteousness that comes to us through you because you are the sacrificial lamb of God. And so with that, Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us, both in the physical and in the spiritual realm in which we live today. Praise your name, Lord. Amen. Now let us take of the bread. Remembering it represents the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I say this every time we serve communion. Isaiah 53, 5 lists the things that Jesus did for us as he paid the ultimate price as the Lamb of God in our behalf. And so as we take and eat of it, I pray that you know that you're eating of it, having been purified and cleansed. Even as we prayed today, if you prayed the prayer in your own words, that we prayed in our words. And so let's take of the bread and let us eat together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now as we take of the cup, it represents the blood that was shed from Jesus' body. The scripture says, without the shedding of blood, 
There is no remission for sin. Jesus shed pure, clean, righteous blood that your sin and mine might be forgiven. That we might be cleansed and purged and brought back into newness of life. For surely as we've been redeemed, the old man, the old nature, the old way of life is passed away and all things become new. And yet the Bible tells us that we're still in this body and we will be in this body until the Lord takes us home or he comes back for us. And so as we take of this juice of the vine, let us remember the awesome sacrifice that Jesus paid, that you and I might live in his kingdom forever. We thank you, Lord. We give praise to Almighty God for sending you to deliver us. In Jesus' name we declare it. Let us drink together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for listening to Christian Living 101. Remember, we are totally dependent upon your prayers and generosity. Log on to ChristianLiving101.org. There are over 300 video Bible studies there, plus many other items of interest with Pastor Applegate. We welcome your prayer requests and your questions. Please contact us at Christian Living 101. That's P.O. Box 72150 in Phoenix, Arizona, 85050, or email Gene at Gene, with a G-E-N-E, Gene at ChristianLiving101.org.